Alrighty, so this is going to be the second video recording of a draft analysis. And so last time I did the game one of week one of North Quarter Gaming, and this time it was going to be game two, which, um, in my opinion, had a lot more issues with the draft than game one did, but we'll get into it. So, starting off with the ban one on blue side, we had Victor. Uh, presumably same reasons that they banned it in game one. As I said before, it's not a horrible ban, it's not amazing, it's fine. Um, following it up is the Kha'Zix ban, again facing a enemy one-trick Ka. Um, I should probably actually put team names here. And There we go. So, Kha'Zix absolutely fine here, um, mostly because the enemy has a one trick, otherwise it would be a kind of mediocre ban, but um, Tristana coming out here, again just target ban, um, nothing really too special about it, and then we have what I think is probably the first bad ban of the draft, Morgana. So the reason they're banning Morgana is probably due to being affected by it in the last game, the Morgana was super important to the comp and was like one of the big problems of the game one draft. However, um, unless you are specifically looking to um, lean into things that Morgana would be good against, um, the Morgana ban is pretty bad here. Something like a Seraphine or a Rel would be better options here. None of them are, neither of them are uh, available on this tool, but yeah. I accidentally moved it there. Okay, so moving onward is the Shen. Um, another, it's a whatever ban. It's not like horrible, but it's not great either. Um, but yeah, just targeting out the ban and then finishing it up with a Hecarim, who is a decent jungler to ban out. Um, so yeah, so far only mistake has been the Morgana. Uh, and then a bunch of, you know, situationally okay bands. And then starting off, Seraphine comes in here. I really wish I had an icon here. Okay. We're just going to do a pink S here. So, Seraphine comes in here. And is immediately countered with Thresh and Talia. So, let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, Seraphine is ridiculously strong and ridiculously blindable. She's pickable in three roles, ADC, support, and mid. She can be played top, but it's pretty situational, so uh, I won't include that. Um, Realistically speaking, if you know the enemy plays Seraphine, you should be banning it phase one instead of Morgana. And then picking Thresh Talia here is also pretty bad. Um, so Thresh does kind of mediocre into Seraphine. Like, it, it's not the worst pick you could do, but it's, it's nothing fancy. Um, and then Talia here is really, really bad. Um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is that the draft is still very open, and Talia excels when faced against particular drafts, and is almost useless when faced with others. So if the enemy um, opts to go in for like a long-range poke comp with like a decent amount of peel, Talia is going to be absolutely useless. Um... The other problem is that all of her counters in the jungle are still open. Um, stuff like, you know, Olaf, um, what else counters? Talia. Let me just refresh myself. So yeah, stuff like Olaf, I believe Evelyn, um, Yeah, Ka and Hecarim do also counter her, but they're banned out. 
But yes, overall, just not a great pick here. Um, some pretty big weaknesses. And it is immediately followed up with the Caitlyn and the Olaf. So, as I said, Olaf does counter Talia and Caitlyn as well counters Talia because of the long range. Um, it's really hard for Talia to get on top of her. And the Seraphine Caitlyn lane is going to kind of bully out this Thresh. Um, so you're, you're, you're kind of forced into um, picking like an aggressive bot laner here and trying to just coin flip the lane because otherwise, I mean, Seraphine outscales Thresh. Caitlyn is going to bully most of the safer hyperscaling ADCs along with Seraphine. So if, if you pick like a Jinx, um, you're going to get bullied. If you pick like um, Kai'Sa, you're going to get bullied. If you pick... Um, like Zaya, you're going to get bullied. So all of these like scaling hyper carry ADCs are just completely shut down by the Seraphine um, Caitlyn, which means you'd be looking to get something like a um, Jin or a um, Samira, something like that, just to like try and apply pressure, maybe Draven. Um, but at that point, you're like super coin flipping the lane and you're leaning super hard into, you know, we win the early game or we lose the game. Um, so what they do pick is Sivir, which is, it's not horrible. Like, it's, the problem with Sivir here is she doesn't have super good synergy with any of the champions currently picked. And she doesn't do, like, particularly well into Seraphine. Which means that you're you're kind of just picking Sivir because there isn't a better option. Which means you've had issues earlier on in the draft. Um, but anyway, moving on to the second phase of bans, we're getting rid of Malphite. So they're trying to shut down things that could get on top of this um, like super long range backline. And Silas coming out here. Um, not a great ban. Like, there, there isn't really any ults that Silas would super want to steal so far. But, uh, I, I guess they're just trying to get rid of another threat of that Sivir. Or onto that Sivir, rather. Um, and then the Twisted Fate. Again, trying to get rid of anything that could potentially get backline. Twisted Fate is actually a pretty bad ban here. Um, because... Olaf is extremely good against it, and then the long range of Caitlyn Seraphine actually makes it pretty hard for TF. And even if TF does somehow get through all of that and get to the backline, Seraphine can build a Mikhail's pretty easily. Like, she, she can go at second, third item, um, which means that TF is just going to be completely shut down if they play well. So that's a pretty bad ban for them. And finishing it out is the Jace. So, um, possibly influenced by the last game, um, but also potentially just wanting to get Gnar out and, you know, not have the Jace as an answer. So, they pick Gnar. Uh, Gnar is pretty decent here. He has a bit of peel. He has a bit of engage. Um, realistically speaking... Nar is one of the better picks you can pick here. Um, and it's followed up with a Yon. And a Cho'Gath. Um, so Yon is really good here. Because um, Yon can kind of like sit next to the Olaf and just wait for an opportunity. Um, he's really good at like diving in and then getting back with his E. So it, it, it suits the sort of like CG team fight style they're going for. Um, the Cho'Gath, however, is pretty bad uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, Cho'Gath is hard countered by Nar. Nar just like completely dumpsters on him. Um, so that's pretty bad. 
And then second, um, Ch Cho'Gath doesn't really have a great target in teamfights, and he's kind of being dragged along by the um, Olaf and the Yon, who can go much, much faster than him uh, when they do decide to engage. And so some things that you could pick here that would be slightly better is you can either lean into like a Gragas, who's a lot better at disrupting um, team fights, um, has a little bit of a better time against spell shield, and can follow up on the engage whilst also peeling for the backline. Um, other options would be like if you want to lean into the engage, you can go like Renekton, which can follow up here pretty easily, or you could go all the way back and go for some sort of like Karma. Um, Karma top lane is perfectly fine against Gnar. Uh, but yeah. Um, Camille would actually be okay too. It's a little bit rough in lane, but um, you scale pretty well. And then finishing off is the Corky, who... Corky does fine into this comp. Um, he's pretty good against Olaf. He's pretty decent against Yon. He can poke the Caitlyn a little bit. Um, it's hard to get on top of him with like Cho'Gath Q or Yon E. So Corky's a pretty good pick here. Um, Azir might be slightly better. Um, but is also a lot harder to pilot. So that's perfectly fine here. So the big issues in this draft are Seraphine being let through. The Talia being picked R2. And the Morgana Ban. Those are, those are the big issues. Um, like, the, the, this on its own is a little bit scary, but you can draft against it um, pretty easily. Um, again, like, Corky's really good against it. Nar's really good against it. Sivir does okay into it because, you know, spell shield and ult kiting backwards, it's hard for Olaf to get on top of her. Um, Yon can get on top of her, but it's hard to one-shot her. Um, but yeah, so if if we... Oh, I still have the... There we go. So. Um, once you remove the option of going Seraphine by banning out second. Um, they're left with probably um, Morgana. So they can go Morgana first to get the combo. Alternatively, they can go like, you know, Karma, um, Alistair, Rel. Um, all three of those are decent. But against um, Rel, you go Karma. Against Alistair, you go Morgana. Against... Uh, Karma, you can go um, something like, uh, even Thresh is fine against Karma, to be honest. Um, so that makes your draft a lot better. Uh, then instead of the Talia here, um, you can pick a different jungler, potentially, or you can just pick your Sivir and your um, Corky. Because... When you're picking Corky, you're not really expecting to get a big advantage in the lane. You're like, yeah, Corky's fine here. He he does okay. Um, so, like, it, it would be, like, blue 1 support, R1, R2 support ADC, blue 2 ADC, blue 3 jungle, R3 um, mid or jungle. which is just a lot easier to draft into and then gives you counter pick um, still on R5 without really losing anything because like what 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 are they going to pick into Corky that can counter it? Um, or you can pick jungle and then you've still got the same three positions. It's just in an order that doesn't have you blinding uh, Talia R2.
Um, so that's that's the main issues with this draft. Um, so like how I would do it, keeping phase one bands except for Seraphine. All oh, right, yeah, shoot, I keep forgetting. There we go. Right, so blue one. Um, yeah, maybe they'll change it up a bit, but let's let's say they go Morgana. And they've got Morgana Blue One, which is a pretty bad blind. You go um, Karma, and you can still go the Sivir. It's not as good as, say, like a, a um, Jin or something, but Sivir's perfectly fine here. Um, they pick the Caitlyn Olaf. Oh, that's a volley bear. And then you have so many options. You can look at jungle, you can look at mid, you can go, you know, Oriana, Corky, you can go um well junglers are good here. Evelyn struggles, um Udyr's not horrible. Um Nocturne's not horrible. Um, Kindred's okay. So yeah, you have like quite a few options here. Um, the one I'd probably go for is Oriana. Um, and then they ban out... Um, same bands. Um, there's even less reason for them to ban um, TF this time, but... And... Jace. And then you can still pick the Gnar. Gnar is really good here. Um, they're still going to counterpick themselves with Cho for some reason. Um, I don't know why they would, um, and Yon is kind of mediocre here. So, uh, then you've got R5, you've got Jungle, you know they have a Morgana and a Caitlyn, as well as a Cho'Gath and a Yon. So you want something that can just deal with Yon engage, pretty much. Um, so champions are decent here. Um, Udyr is fine. You are okay with a Sejuani. You are okay with Kindred. You are okay with Echo. Um, Graves is ne. He's not bad. He's not great. Uh, but the one I'm going to go for is probably... I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling spicy, so I'm going to go Nocturne. And the reason behind this is, first of all, Nocturne has a really easy time on getting on top of Caitlyn. Um, Nocturne can also 1v1 the Yone. If Nocturne gets ahead, he can 1v1 the Olaf, and Cho'Gath can't stop him. And Morgana also has a, a difficult time stopping him because of the spell shield. Uh, he also provides a ball delivery service in the form of his ult, and he works decently with um, server ult. So he's, he's okay here. Um, it's a little bit of a spicy play. It can end up not working out, but I like it. So that's my version of this draft. And uh, that will be it for this recording. And I will make a, another couple recordings over the next couple days for the actual game review. So ciao for now. See you next time.